In this video, we're looking at firmware and we'll be asking, what is it? Why should I care? And how do I use it? So, what is it? Firmware is defined as permanent software programmed into read-only memory, which means it is a piece of programming code written to a microchip that is part of a device. In its simplest form, the 2.4 GHz frequency used for remote control requires a radio and a receiver. The transmitter transmits the signal, the receiver receives the signal. However, for this to work, the transmitter and receiver need to speak the same language. Firmware, in this example, is a language each device speaks. So, why should I care? Firmware versions have changed over the years, each offering varying functionality and satisfying different regulations. Basically, there are two versions we need to be aware of. The European Union LBT firmware and Universal firmware. LBT, listen before talk, being legal in the UK. The following clip shows how the LEDs appear on an XM Plus receiver when it and a transmitter are using incompatible firmware. Solid red and green LEDs are seen. So, how do I use it? There are two software elements to a Taranis transmitter. The first, where you set up models in your radio settings using the screen and controls as its interface. This is done by default using software called OpenTX. The second part is, by default, found within the transmitter. This is called the internal XJT module. It is the XJT module that transmits signals to the receiver. If the transmitter and receiver are using different firmware, one of them has to be changed. When doing this, it is easy to overlook that to change a transmitter, both OpenTX and the internal XJT module need changing, not just one of them. Some pilots mistakenly change one, believing that they've changed everything. This is when they experience binding issues. The aim is to get both the radio and receiver using the same firmware. On FreeSky's download page for the Tranis X9D+, you'll find a firmware section for OpenTX and a second for the internal XJT module. Pilots need to download and install the correct compatible version of firmware for both parts. Changing a receiver, there is only one element involved. And no matter which receiver, you'll find a FreeSky download page available. Once the correct firmware has been successfully installed, the radio and receiver will bind. In this case, a solid green LED is seen. In summary, once you successfully match and flash the firmware, the next challenge awaits. Thanks for watching.